Is including pool league games as opposed to just tournament games in Fargo Rate a problem? Some think it is. And it's an important issue. I mean, Fargo ratings have really become the de facto worldwide rating system for pool. I mean, look at the recent International Nine Ball Open. The top 16 entrants by Fargo rating, they were all in different groups of eight in the 128-player bracket. In fact, the top 24 players by Fargo rating, they were all in different groups of four and couldn't meet up until at least the third round on the on the winner's side. Coincidence? Sure, could be. And here's the top 100 Canadian players that we recently posted. And an interesting thing that we pointed out is that about 20 of these players get pool league games into Fargo Rate every week via Fargo Rate LMS. And those come in from multiple provinces. And that's an interesting thing because people might want to use a list like this to select who to represent Canada in international competitions on nine-foot tables, for instance. So that brings us back to the question, is including Pooley games in Fargo Rate a problem? Well, what are the objections? Here are some of the things we hear. Pooley games are played one game at a time. That's different than in a tournament. They may be played against weaker competition. They may be played on seven-foot tables. They may be played for fun rather than serious competition, more a social environment. They may be played against people interested in managing their rating sometimes, and they may be played under the influence. In light of this, I'm going to describe what I see as a common mental model of how people tend to view their own rating and how it relates to the game data that contributes to that rating. Then, no surprise, I'm going to dig into our database to try to learn something, and then we're going to come back and describe what it was that's missing in that common mental model. Here's the way I imagine you view your rating. You understand your rating is based upon game data, and the game data that goes into making up your rating is like a column of bricks. Uh, when that game data is good, whether that means for you it's on nine-foot tables when you've gotten enough sleep in high entry fee tournaments where you care about the outcome or whatever it is, those are nice clean bricks and, and it's making a nice column that looks like this. And then somebody says, hey, here's a bunch more bricks. But you look at it and they're not nice, neat, clean bricks. They're, they're fuzzy bricks. This may be the way you view league games. And you say, okay, yes, they make my column a little bit taller but they influence the integrity of my column. And maybe I'd be better off without those league games in there, having a, a somewhat shorter column, but it being high integrity. I want to convince you later that this view is missing something important. If you look at the growth trajectory of the Fargo Ray database, we've input almost as many games in the last 12 months as we did in the first four years of, of doing this. And as much as it's awesome to have all this data, it's also a burden. Think about it. The answers to lots of the questions that people in pools spend a lot of time talking about, those answers are in that data, and we have access to that data and other people don't. It's like we're all at a holiday meal arguing about the capital of Kazakhstan, and we're the only one with a phone with internet service. Still, as much as the answers are in there, it's not always easy to tease them out. So here's what we did as our current dig into this database. We look for people locally who both play a lot of league games and play a lot of tournament games. And it turns out that me, Mike Page, Steve Ernst, and Brian Champagne were the three Fargo Rate people, all fit this bill. The rest of the local people here who also fit this bill vary over a wide range of skill, from Todd at around 300 to Rory at around 700. The league games for these players actually come from playing in Different divisions, some against stronger opponents, some against weaker opponents. Many of the tournament games come from local weekly tournaments, but they also come from pro tournaments as well as national and regional uh, tournaments. Then for each player, we did three things. Selected games played from 2017 to now, essentially a three-year period, removed games against opponents with unestablished ratings, and then computed a separate performance rating for league games and for tournament games. This is what we get looking just at tournament games. Call it tournament performance. These players have on average about 8, 1,800 tournament games leading to this tournament performance number, and it goes from about 300 with Todd to about 700 with Rory. Next, what we're going to do is compute a separate performance rating for each one of these players based only on league games. So there's no games that cross between 
the tournament performance and the league performance. These players have on average about 700 league games leading to the league performance rating, and those games are all played one at a time. And this is what we get. The bars on the right for each player are the performance ratings that we get considering only league games. In computing these league performance ratings, the computer knows nothing about these players having ever played in a tournament. And these modest differences in ratings that you see between tournament and league, they're within expected statistical variation. So it's pretty clear looking at this that you get a pretty good picture of how these players play relative to one another just looking at tournament data or just looking at league data. And in fact, you get the best picture of how these players play relative to one another looking at all the data together. Here's another interesting thing. These league games, they're all eight ball. Only eight ball games played in league here. The tournament games, they're a mixture of eight ball and nine ball, but they're actually more nine ball than eight ball. Some of these players, and actually many players out there, have strong feelings of how they play rotation games versus eight ball games. The data doesn't necessarily support those views. So, back to the original question is including. League games in Fargo rate a problem? No, not only is it not a problem, it's a good thing. What I haven't shown you, uh, but I can tell you, is that when we make predictions using all of the data, and when I say all of the data, I mean 8-ball, 9-ball, 10-ball, 7-foot table, 9-foot table, league, small tournaments, big tournaments, when we make predictions using all of the data, those are the predictions that are most borne out by what actually happens. Those are our best predictions. So let's go back to this mental model of the data leading to your rating as being like a like a column of bricks. And removing the league games as being like going to a shorter column but, but one of higher integrity. And though there's no evidence the league games are actually inferior uh, data, uh, let's suppose that, that, that they represent here whatever it is that, that you feel uh, seems like inferior data, whether it's 8-ball or bar box or low entry fee tournaments or league games or whatever it is, what's wrong with this argument here? That going to less data but higher integrity data uh, ought to be a good thing. To understand, you have to go back to the core information that leads to Fargo ratings. It's game outcome, win or loss, against opponents of known rating. The, the view, I believe, in the common mental model is that people are only focused on the top one here. It's an egocentric view where they imagine that the integrity of the bricks in their record is, is largely determined only by the quality or integrity of their own games. When in fact the biggest contributor to the integrity of the bricks, of all of the bricks, is the second one. So here once again is how I think people view removing league games or whatever games they think it is that are of low, lower quality. My column got shorter, but the games that remain are of higher quality, so I think it's a net win. And here's what actually happens. When you remove league games, you not only make your column shorter, like you expected, but you actually influence the integrity of the bricks that you already have. And that is because you influence the ratings of everybody else. Let's say you have 20 different opponents, and each of them has 20 different opponents. Some of your 20 opponents may only have league games. So without those league games, we wouldn't know anything about how your opponent, that opponent plays, and so those games would not contribute to your rating at all. The league games may just put that person in the ballpark of how they play, but that gives information about your games played against them. And we may only know about how some of your opponents play because of league games their opponents have played. If you think of Fargo ratings like a giant jigsaw puzzle, a group of league games is like that little brown piece that looks like a million other little brown pieces, but taken together, you can see that they're a dog's ear. And this is really the same issue as when people say we should have separate ratings for eight ball and rotation games or bar table and big table. As soon as we limit the games on the left, then what we're also doing is decreasing the integrity of the games that we keep. So no, league games going into Fargo rate are not a problem. It's quite the contrary. We should all encourage leagues everywhere to get their games into Fargo rate. They're an important part of the glue that connect all of us together.